Let's make a soldering tool. Howdy friends, welcome back to the House of Tone. My name is Wes Lee. I'm a professional band instrument repair technician. I started a YouTube channel to document my life in the trades. I appreciate you stopping by the shop today. We're going to make a tool. So this will be tool video number two in that part of the series. Hey, time out. What do you think of the different content I'm shooting in 23? Do you like all these different formats? Let me know. I appreciate it. Okay, so a couple of videos back, I did a solder joint, start to finish, no edits, several inquiries about what I was using when I was dressing my solder joints, the flanges. And so I thought that that would be a great tool for us to make. While this tool can be made using anything from just your hand drill, a drill press, bench motor, um, we're going to use the lathe. This is a good lathe project. If you're new to using a lathe and just trying to get some chops, um, this is a fun project to do. We're really nothing, doing nothing more than drilling and cutting things off. I mean, you know, it's, it's very, but it's a good confidence builder. I remember some of the first projects that I turned in repair school and it was like, you're going, wow, hey, look, we made that. And it was a very exciting thing. And that's really a part of what turned me on to just making things if I didn't have them or if I had an idea for a custom tool or something like that. So let's go to the tool room and I'll show you some really bad drawings and we'll get into it. So here we've got your typical scrapers. This is the one that I made. I made this out of a professional repair tool called a drumstick. This is brass. So it just looks like a screwdriver style of a head on this particular one. This is a square shoulder scraper. This is steel. It's commercially bought. And then this is the three point triangle hollow scraper. These are steel. Okay, so why would I make one out of brass? Well, let's zoom this in. So when you're scraping, let's say you make a, a mark, that steel cuts right into the brass. Okay, now if we're using this one, it will be thing two, and it gets away from you. And it really gouges up Brass is not harder than brass, right? Steel is harder than brass, so it will cut and make marks. The brass just rubs on it, so it leaves a little bit of a mark, but not nearly like these two. Now, if we take a piece of buffing cloth, And we just buff this off. Okay. What you're left with, there is our triangle scraper mark. There is a square cutter mark but the one with the brass is not there. That's why. If I'm doing a delicate joint, then I can use this and to clean those joints really good and I don't have to worry about slipping and making a bad mark. So the actual dimensions of this, I've got it where it's in my hand good. So that puts it at about four and a quarter. Okay, thereabouts. And then I made the, we'll call this the blade, and I put it, made it at about two and a half inches. So just, if you're on, you're on. If you're not quite there, then that's fine too. I mean, it's really not that big a deal. I'm going to actually make a new handle, and I'm going to make it out of ABS. Okay, we're going to load in our piece of stock. We're going to face it. So I'm going to... Get my facing cutter 
and lock that in. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and come across, bring this up. Get the part faced off. And it can come in, I'm gonna make a chamfer. I'm going to take a parting tool and put a groove in it. That's why I said if you're new to having a lathe, you can do this project and just have some fun with, with your tooling and start learning about what it all does and how you can make different shapes. So I'm going to make a nice little groove there back out. I'm going to load in my countersink bit pilot hole starter. Tighten down my tail stock. I'm going to run it in. This will give our hold beyond the center. Back this off. I know for the size stock that I'm using, I'm going to use a number 11 drill bit. I'll take this in. I'll take it down to about that far. So we've got it basically lined up four and a quarter inches is about right there okay let's get it chopped go down back in the lathe on this other side load our facing tool in Come in, I'm going to put a chamfer. This time I'm going to put two decorative rings. Because why not? I like the way those grooves felt. Instead of knurling this, I'm going to actually just put some grooves in it.
So I was just having some fun. So there's a handle. And we had some fun making little decorations on it. Piece of brass rod measured out. Back over to the chop saw. Might go a little longer than two and a half on this one. Give me some room to grind it back. One of the things I just love on this Proxon chop saw is that you'll see that our lines aren't marked up with the blade here. Oh, not to worry. It's got this knob on it. And that does some groovy, groovy things. Just allows that blade to dial in and be completely precise. And what I, this device that this thing holds with is so rigid. Let's make a cut. Now I'm going to dress it on the oil stone, give it a nice home. Nice and sharp. We have a nice tight fit. It's loose enough that it will accept epoxy very well, but still tight enough that there's no slop and it's going to be straight which is the one requirement that i do have okay i'm going to glue this into place and then we'll jump back in okay so it's been five or six minutes my five minute epoxy is dry so that's what i put this all together with that's my final product kind of funky kind of cool feels good in the hand i actually really like the ridges on that much better than knurling. I think that's going to help. So I have some joints that I have taken down to, um, they're not tinned out as much as I would normally do them, but I just wanted to show this for demonstration. So I have a lot more control as I come across with this. See, it will still do everything that the steel will do. It'll take care of this soft solder. But when you slip like that, it doesn't get away from you. And that's just the beauty of doing this. And so you can make these into different shapes, you know. Use them for all kinds of things. The other thing I really like is that I can turn this on its side and that's wide enough. I didn't make it thin as a razor blade, but I can get in and I can contour. See that? I can contour that brace back out. And so on some horns, that helps it look more like the way it originally looked. So when it's, when it's all smooth, smooth as silk like that so that's it friends that's how you make a solder scraping tool i just really like mine i like my original one most of my ideas happen and i move real fast and sometimes it's fun to take a little bit of time and just have fun and learn your machines and learn maybe what some of your bits will do and maybe try a different technique i use two-part epoxy five minute to hold it together that's all it was so if it comes out it's no big deal i can just glue back in i can also just heat it up and take it out when it gets too short and i still have my handle so i could use it for something else if i need to i appreciate you watching i appreciate you stopping by the shop today this is wesley signing out